thank you. Thank you for your kind invitation. It was a uh, great pleasure to be here. I'll be as quick as possible because you know uh, you're a little bit tired and we're back in time. This was a relatively elderly 78 uh, year old gentleman. He had new onset chest pain. He had a PCI of the proximal portion of the LAD a few years ago. He had moderate LV systolic dysfunction, short runs of non-sustained VT, and he was hypertensive in a dilated aortic arch. Um, because of the dilated aortic arc, uh, this uh, angio was done by a, a, our younger colleagues. The, the RCA was a non-dominant, and this was the very first injection after he had a difficulty engaging it. As you could see, uh, the catheter is roofing. It's a diagnostic catheter, and uh, as you could see, um, there's a left main dissection from the very osteal. The good thing was that he stopped at this point, no injections, and um, what and, uh, we do usually and everyone else do, we rapidly change to a guiding catheter. We put the wire in the LAD, and um, we did try to wire the L6, but um, because it was a little bit difficult, we didn't want to do any injections. We uh, accepted um, the LAD wiring, and then we decided to just stent from the ostium because the ostium was where the catheter had this, done this um, iatrogenic. Um, the blood that was inside the uh, vessel acted as a marker so we could see the ostium and um, we checked in few projections and we were pretty sure that we had covered the ostium. And so um, this was the result after putting a 3.8, which had the distal part in the uh, LAD stent and the proximal part was in the uh, ostium. Um, after stenting with a 3.5 relatively short stent, um, the results were acceptable. We checked in a few views and uh, we did a pot uh, with a first with a four, um, 4.5 and uh, we usually do a pot puff sign which is just give a small puff of injection and if it passes through the struts and goes through usually you don't have good a position so after a 4.5 we went for a 5 uh, and after the 5 millimeters this is as you see the die is passing with a 4.5 in this slide but um, this is the part of the sign which shows that you have good opposition um, and with uh, with dye not passing, you have uh, less than 6% um, risk of malopposition. So uh, with a 5 millimeter pot, we were quite satisfied and the results looked okay. So we were happy. We took the patient to the recovery um, and um, this is the final result. And uh, this is, we, there was a small radiolucent um, um, lucency which we whatever we did we, it was presumably the dye that was the blood was that stuck behind the stents but um, the patient was stable and it looks okay so we took the patient to the recovery and this is the last view so we kind of forgot uh, about him and about half an hour later they told us that the patient had an episode of ventricular tachycardia so um, uh, he required a DC shock we switched to ephemeral 7 French and decided to look what was uh, looking. Uh, at that point, the first views looked okay. We were not sure exactly what had happened. Um, we took a view from the cranial, and in this view, we thought perhaps, perhaps uh, the radial force of our stent was not so good because it was an or zero stent. We had overexpanded it to uh, five millimeters, and um, we thought perhaps a small stent position in the, the osteol it, it would increase the radial strength and um, uh, this would look be better. So from that same projection, we passed the wire again. The stent passed smoothly and uh, as you could see, uh, it looked okay and um, we weren't worried at that point uh, that perhaps there was no problem. We just going to place a stent and this would be more safe. Um, this was another projection just to make sure. But when we inflated the balloon, 
the second that we inflated the balloon, as you, I, I wonder if you could see, um, the axis of the first stents changed. Then we noticed what had happened. We had gone through the struts of the stents and not through the end. And um, so basically we had um, like, uh, yeah, I, I'm sure, I wonder, uh, is it working? Not working. Um, so I think you could see it in this slide. We have two slides. It's like an inverted culotte, uh, except that it's outside. So uh, at that point, we were thinking, what should we do? It was like this. Um, we were not sure exactly what to do. Um, there was the option of snaring it out, but really uh, taking out two fully deployed stents from the left main, especially intertwined, uh, was out of the question. There was an option of doing an operation well, uh, he was a frail elderly gentleman, so we forgot that. Um, as Mohanad said, sometimes the best thing is just to do nothing. So uh, we decided to leave him and um, we discharged him on dual antiplatelet therapy and a NOAC. And it's been three or four months and it's been relatively stable and uh, he has no symptoms. But why does this happen? Well, if you do a POT, um, you will expand your stent, you will elongate your stent proximally. This was a benchmark in Euro-PCR. This is clinically not relevant if you are in the middle of a vessel. But if you are in the ostium of a vessel, especially the left main, and you think you have positioned it correctly, when you do a pot, you will exceed uh, the length and this will increase significantly. For instance, if you increase a three millimeter stent to a five millimeter, almost four millimeter, the length of the stent uh, will increase. So in this case, we had positioned it in the ostium, but when we did a pot, it uh, elongated and was significantly out. Well, if you have the wire in, which in the majority cases, it is the case, this will not be a problem. But if in like this case, you come out, the wire comes out and you take it back in, uh, you will probably pass through the struts of your sense. So this is just uh, in case um, uh, for anyone else, if you do a pot, be careful. Thank you. Excellent.